I like chairs, whether they are meant to enhance gaming, lounging, or working. And so when we released our very first chair review back in March 18, I was surprised by all the requests for us to review a very specific chair brand I had never heard of before. So when TW offered to send us the Sihu M57 for us to review, we immediately said yes. However, I will admit that there was a part of me which didn't want to get up from the comfortable nest which is my Aeron. But for purposes of science and our viewers, I got my ass off. You can learn a lot about a chair by scrutinizing parts you only see during the unboxing and assembly process. I'm Rafael from Hardware Sugar, the only PC shop in the Philippines with no BS warranty, and this is our unboxing of the Sihu M57 and our first impressions. Is this chair worth 8,500 pesos to 9,000 pesos? This is the first step to finding out. Daming options, daming prices. Ah, ito. Buti na lang, may cdkeyoffers.com. Madali na ang order. Search for the software you need. Add to cart. Daan ka sa payment options nila. Wala pang 5 minutes. Finished. May legit working cdk ka na para sa Windows mo. Gamitin ng aming code para makakuha pa ng discounts. Kaya kung naghahanap ka ng legit, mura, at original software, check out cdkeyoffers.com Again, special shout out to TW for being awesome when they realized we share a chair obsession. If you guys are interested in buying the Sihu M57, you can check out their Lazada store to which I'll leave a link in the video description. They seem genuinely excited about the products they sell and care enough to even follow up if you are enjoying your purchase. Something we strive for in our own business. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who is concerned about paying 8,500 or 9,500 pesos for a chair that is difficult or impossible to assemble out of the box. This is not a sponsored video from TW or Sihu, and so I can be as candid as I want to be, including the fact that it took me two weeks to build up the courage to unbox this guy. It's not that I wasn't excited, it's just I'm always apprehensive about assembling a chair because the instructions manual might be missing, there won't be English instructions, a part is missing, or I embarrass myself by needing to have to call the supplier to teach me on how to assemble it, like what I did with the Ethan chair. Packaging-wise, the parts are well cushioned and individually wrapped in plastic. Some of the items are actually cushioned in boxes and a thin layer of styrofoam. Worthy to note, however, is that nothing beats my unpacking experience with the Sharkoon chair. But that kind of excessive packaging, however, comes with its own problems. I respect companies that minimize package wastage and see who should get points for wasting less while successfully protecting their product. Keep in mind that almost every chair you buy is made in China. It thus needs to make the trip from China to the Philippines or wherever you live. And then a whole host of other places such as a warehouse or store in Bulacan before it even gets shipped to you, maybe in Cebu. So yes, how items are wrapped are important because it dictates how much of the product is left when it actually gets to you. Yes, it came with an instructions manual. However, the instructions aren't in English, but the picture directions are very clear and I don't think anyone should worry about being confused during the assembly process. All right, M620, M620, six pieces, four plus one. Uh, which one do we use? Well, six pieces because it means there are three holes for each arm, so we open up the six piece. All right, let's do that. I now understand why chair companies place all the tools inside one transparent plastic packet. Like an action figure, it's so when the chair is being packed, they literally just get one pack containing all the screws and the Allen wrench, rather than picking out the exact number of screws of different screw types. Why is this important to you? Because it greatly reduces the chances that you will get a chair with missing parts. If you're ever gonna buy this chair, feel free to follow me along. First, we start out by attaching the wheel to the base of the chair. I'm not using the wheels that come with the chair, instead I bought these 600 peso roller blade casters, which I highly recommend everyone gets for their chair regardless if they're buying a new one because it seriously upgrades the rolling functionality of the chair and it protects wood flooring and the carpet. I talked about this in almost every chair video we've done so far. 
just go get it. Second, we attach the two arms to the seat of the chair. I like how it's just one type of Allen wrench and just two types of screws. Sometimes chair companies ship several different kinds of wrenches and screws. The less the better. As I screw these in, I couldn't help but notice how this matted plastic feels and looks. It's like a smooth premium egg carton finish with no ugly plastic splinters sticking out. Something which I couldn't unsee when I was putting together the Ethan chair. There were no visible bumps or imperfections worth noting, except maybe one. Another thing that I liked was the use of the shiny metal on the arms. Even if you can't see most of this metal as it sits underneath the chair, I like knowing it's there because it reminds me of how sturdy these arms must be. Third, we attach the chair chassis which holds the reclining lever. These left one, right one. I believe he's referring to, the instructions are referring to these holes. And these little dots must refer to these dots. Fits. Yeah, I guess we just start here. Fourth, we need to attach the chair seat to the backrest, which was difficult to do on the floor without scratching the floor. I recommend you place it on a carpet or a bed or get a second person to help you out with this part. Lastly, it's time to attach the base to the body of the chair. And here we go. Huh. Hold on. These arms don't seem right. Ah! Baliktad! Alright, in case this happens to you, you can remove and reinstall each arm without having to remove any of the other parts. Thankfully, there was just enough space for the Allen wrench to maneuver next to the recline lever. I have been using the Sihu M57 for two weeks now, and I'm still in the courtship phase or the getting to know part of the relationship. For me, the M57 is like a crush I just met who I found attractive right away. It checks off all the things I should like about the chair. It has a mesh build, thus I hardly sweat in this, and I don't need to worry about any material falling off on like fake leather chairs. It has a headrest which I missed very much when I moved to the Aeron. It has armrests which move up and down and even twist from side to side, a feature which I didn't have in my favorite 8 year old chair. It has a variety of reclining levels which you can choose to freestyle move with or choose to lock in place entirely. It has a lumbar support which is hidden behind the mesh of the chair, none of that ugly pillow stuff you see with gaming chairs. And because of the wheels I got, it rolls beautifully while at the same time taking care of my wood flooring. I guess the best way to summarize my first impression of the M57 is that it's like a stormtrooper. White, smooth, clean, factory produced, and equipped with everything you might need in the battlefield, or in our case, the work environment. However, despite all that clean armor, stormtroopers die with one shot and they also miss almost every shot. The things which make the M57 so appealing are also the things which have me a little concerned. Two weeks have passed and I often find myself still readjusting my headdress to various positions over and over in order to find the ultimate comfy position. Every time I think I've found it, I end up readjusting it again an hour later. Readjusting the headdress all the time isn't something that I did my old ergo chair, which was relatively straightforward when it comes to reclining and finding the ultimate comfortable spot. And then there's my concern with the... Don't get me wrong, there is seriously a lot to like about this chair and I can say as early as now that it is priced reasonably well for what you get. However, check out our full review of the Seiko M57 in our upcoming video where I get into even more specific details on everything from how the M57 compares to chairs within the same price range, how it compares to a gaming chair, how it compares with the throne of all chairs. I'll also talk about the long-term arm comfort, ergonomics, lower back support, and my final conclusion if I would buy it for my own PC setup. Till then, stay safe everyone! We want to give an extremely special thanks to our top fans who helped make all of our work possible. ITX Addict, Rafael James, Ian Meru, Liam Magnae, Richard Onkinko, John Ruben Otia, and Christian Espinosa. It's good seeing all of you so regularly during our streams. And again, thank you so much for the support.